Today's Mass Convention, we offer it for the eternal rest of Hector Rivera Bocanegra. And in gratitude to God for these wonderful 13 years God placed me in this community, with this parish, I am so grateful to St. Francis School community and parish community. I was very happy here in St. Francis. I enjoyed being here, and it's a sad thing that I have to leave. I have I have been transferred, as most of you already know, to St. Elizabeth in Oakland. Breaks my heart, breaks my heart to leave St. Francis, as I say it, because I really love it being here. I was very happy for 20, 13 years here. So in gratitude to God for those wonderful years and my prayers to all of you uh, that may God bless all of you in your lives. And as I always say in graduation masses, the purpose of our Catholic schools is to form people, good citizens and good Christians to influence in a positive way our world. So that will continue to be my prayers for all of you that you indeed become good citizens and good Christians to influence our world in a positive way. We gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves for this most sacred mystery, let us call upon our sins and ask God for forgiveness. Pardon the offenses of your people, Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, and in your goodness set us free from the bounds of the sins we have committed in our weaknesses. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Thank you. 
Who wants to fulfill your life, that your life has a meaning and purpose to be? All of us. All human beings want that. Want to be happy, and they want to we all want to fulfill our lives. And that is what God wants for us. That's why God insults that desire that he has. It's God who insults that desire in our us. As we heard in the first reading, God said, I will gather my people. I will bring them together. Wherever they are scattered from, whatever they may be, I will gather them and I will take care of them. Take care of them means I will love them. I will protect them. I will guide them. I, be, I will be with them. Today we are here in the Gospel how Jesus called his disciples, what for? To take care of the people, to ca take care of others, to bring to others the good news. What is the good news? That God loves us, that God cares for us, that God is merciful, that God wants our well-being. That's the good news. 
And that's what we are called to do. All, all of us who are disciples of Christ, we are called to bring that good news to others. Through our baptism, we have that responsibility to bring good news to people who feel hopeless, the people who feel powerless, people who are afraid, who people who feel in darkness, people who go through difficult times, is to bring them, to bring them hope, to bring them strength through the good news that Christ brought to us. It's all of us. It's not only the priest, it's not only the bishop, it's not only the pope. It's all of us who are baptized, all of us who are followers of Christ have that responsibility to bring that good news to others. I'm sure you understand this. For example, when you see a sad classmate that he or she is sad, why do you feel sad about that? To see that person sad, to go into difficult times, and sometimes you just go and, and hug that person or, or and encourage that person by saying, it's okay, it's going to be okay. Things like that. Kind things that we do to others. Kind things that we say to other people. That is to be Christian. And when somebody makes mistakes, we are called to forgive. Because we all make mistakes. We all are humans. We all have weaknesses. We all have limitations. But Christ teaches us. You need to love each other. You need to forgive each other. And how good it feels when we are forgiven, no? Wow. We, we kind of let it go all the, uh, the sad that we have because we had misbehaved. And when somebody forgives us, wow, it felt so good. That's because that person brought good news to us, forgiveness. My brothers and sisters, that's our call as disciples of Christ. And then, as Christians, God gives us, God gives us all gives blessings. And also, God gives us, through those gifts and blessings, God gives us the possibility to grow and to be, as I always say, I say it at the beginning, as I, as I say it, at, the, at, 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 at every graduation, I always try to focus into that. The purpose of Catholic schools is to inform you, to help you grow in your faith, so that you may go into the world to be good Christians and good citizens, being responsible citizens. And God gives us, all of us, a vocation. A vocation. To me, for example, God called me to be a priest. So that through my vocation, I can find the meaning and purpose in my life. Fulfill my life. Be happy. And God has fulfilled that in me. I have been ordained 19 years as a priest. And I have since then been so happy. I love my priesthood. I love what I do. I don't change my priesthood for nothing else in the world. But that's what God wants me to be, a priest. And find that meaning and purpose in my life through my priesthood. To some of you, may God call you to be a priest or none. To some of you, God may call you to a marriage life. Whatever God is calling us is where God wants us to be happy. Is where God wants us to fulfill our lives. And God will provide always. God will guide us always. If we open our minds and hearts to Christ, to the good news that Christ brings us. But we have to open our minds. We have to open our hearts to Christ so that God can work within us and through us for others. So that's my invitation to you. That's my invitation to all of you. Open your minds and hearts to Christ. Allow God to work within you and through you. And God will make your lives fulfilled. 
God will fulfill your lives. And you will be happy when you open your minds and hearts to God. Allow God to work in you and through you with the gifts and talents God has given you. You may be good in math. Well, be a good math teacher or, or scientific person that gives you so much math. Use it in a good way. You may be a, a good doctor and you like medicine. Okay, be a good doctor. More a good doctor in society. A lawyer. Not have to carry your things in, in, by laws and all that stuff. If you become a lawyer, be a good lawyer. Be a good Christian as a lawyer. And you will be happy. Your life will be good. Unfortunately, unfortunately, many times we just go in a career just because of money. No. Money will not make you happy. You will not be fulfilled. Your life will, be not, will not be fulfilled if you just go after money. So I can make money, so that I can be rich, so that I can be famous. No, that doesn't work. Material things are not the fulfillment of our lives. Material things are to help us in our lives, to fulfill our lives, but will never give us the meaning and purpose to be. If material things can give us happiness, if material things can give us happiness, we, you, all of us, should be the happiest people in the history of humanity. You and I should be the happiest people in the history of humanity because you and I have much more things than people had in, in the past. We have TVs, we have cell phones, tablets, we have airplanes can take us to one country to another or one continent to another in a few hours when before they used to travel in a boat or something, walking, takes months for them to go, or weeks to get from one place to another. So we have so much more. We are even able to go to the moon and beyond that. So we should be the happiest people in the history of humanity if material beings should be, if they give us this happiness. Are we, are we the happiest people in the history of humanity? Who knows? Once again, material things are there to help us to, 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 to meet our needs and to help us to live better, comfortably. Instead of going in a boat to Africa, to Europe, now we can take an airplane faster, easier, more comfortable. Even in the airplane we complain because the, the spaces are too small. But can, uh, can you imagine traveling in a boat to Africa, to Europe for months in the bad weather in the ocean and all of that? No. So that's my invitation to all of you. Pay attention to what gifts you have, what talents you have. And it's, those are the tools that God is giving you to be happy and to fulfill your lives. And that is what your teachers are for, your parents are for, to help you because they know you. They, they tell you, you are doing this, and they challenge you to grow in math, in science, in science, whatever that may be. Music, your teachers are there to help you to develop your gifts, to prepare you for life. Your parents are there to teach you, to guide you, to challenge you, to prepare you for life so that you may fulfill your lives. That's what your parents want. That's what your teachers want. They don't want to make your life difficult. They don't want your lives to, to be complicated. On the contrary, your parents, with the help of your teachers or relatives, they want the best for you. So allow yourselves to be guided by those who love and care for you. And in that way, 
you will be, you will fulfill your lives, you will be happy, and you will bring the good news to the world. We need happy people in the world. That's to be guided by God. That's to be good Christian. When we are happy, when our lives are fulfilled, when we live and practice our faith the way we are and who we are. That's why Jesus chose the disciples, so that the disciples can help him to spread the good news. As we heard today, he chose Peter, John, the, the sons of Zebedee. He chose them so that they can learn from Jesus and then themselves go up and out and help him to proclaim the good news that God is love, that God is mercy, that God wants our best, our well-being. It's through them that you and I receive the good news from generation to generation by the Holy Spirit inspiring and guiding people from generation to generation so that you and I can receive the good news that God is love, that God is mercy, that God wants our well-being. But we need to listen to God. We need to open our minds and our hearts to God. How many times do you want to tell God what to do? How many times do you tell God, oh, this is better than what you want for, for me? No. It's where we screw up things. When we think that we know how to do things, when we think that we can handle things, and we don't pay attention to the desire that God puts in our heart. So don't do that. Don't go after pain. Don't go after money in your lives. Develop your gifts. Develop your talents. And from that, choose a career that will help you to fulfill your life. And believe in that way, as I say it, you keep saying it, you will be happy. You will be good disciples of Christ because you're going to live as a disciple of Christ. Whatever career you choose in your lives. So that's my invitation to all of you. Once again, Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this wonderful 13 years you gave me. The reason of my Thank you for those 13 beautiful years. I love being a priest. I love it being here in St. Francis. Yes, I know I make mistakes. And I apologize for the times that I may, may you feel, make you feel bad, uncomfortable, or that I failed you as a priest. But not, never was my intention to do it. I did because of my limitations, my weaknesses. But never my heart and my intention to harm any of you. I, keep, I ask for pardon for those times. And I thank you for all the good things that you gave me. Your love, your prayers, your support. Please pray for me. It's not easy for me here to leave St. Francis. It's not easy. But it's my reality. I promise obedience. It's where God is calling me through my bishop to be now to leave this community, to be with another community. I know it is not easy for you either, for some of you, not easy. Because of the relationships that we create. And I will give you my prayers. I went to St. Elizabeth last Friday, no, sorry, last Tuesday. And they are hard ones that their their priests, brothers, Franciscans are leaving. See, that's the love that Christ invites us to live. When we care for others, when we love others. Please pray for me, and I will keep you in my prayers.
Please stand. So with faith, with love, with confidence in God's love and mercy, let us continue praising our Heavenly Father for all the gifts, the blessings God has given us. And also let us pray to our Heavenly Father for one another. The response is, Good Shepherd, hear our We pray. Heavenly Father, we praise, adore, and glorify you for all your love and mercy towards us, for the gifts and blessings you have given us. We present to you also all our intentions and needs, the ones that we spoke and the ones that are in our hearts. We ask you to attend to all of them if they are going to help us to fulfill our lives your will, and overall for our salvation, we ask all of this to Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that these our sacrifices may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. History of Celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. 
We offer you, O oh Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks and praises that you have helped us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Michael Barber, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Hector Rivera Bocanegra. And all of those who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, the Apostles, St. Francis of Assisi, our patron saint, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be coherent to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours forever and ever. Thank you. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
God. You like sports. You come to CYO games. 
you're in the wheelathon, and you ride with us every day. You generously train, encourage, and support our ultra serving. Thank you for inviting students to be active in liturgy. You know us. Your homily speak to our hearts and call us to be faithful disciples at school, in our community, and in the world. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful from the bottom of my heart. I give you thanks for all the love, as I say, support that you gave me, encouragement. I want to ask you one thing. Kati, Kati, Kati. Kati has been such a great support to me also. And I see her, how she loves you, the school, the community of St. Francis. Since she came in on, on board, that's how you say it? On board, she has been a hard worker for St. Francis, especially the school community. She has not even been able to take vacation. So, Kathy, please come forward, please. I'm going to ask you publicly, I'm going to challenge you publicly. I have been challenging her privately, but she doesn't listen to me. <laughs> Even though I, I'm her boss, she doesn't listen to me. But I'm going to do it now publicly. Hopefully you will help me, children, staff, teachers. I have been challenging her to take vacations and she hasn't done it. Because of COVID, because of so many things that were going on. Since she came on board, she has been able to take vacations. I'm going to challenge her again publicly with all of you. Ask her, push her to take at least, at least two weeks of vacation during the summer. Teachers, staff, parents, do not bother her. 
Let her enjoy her family, her time. She needs time for herself also, so that she can give more herself to all of you. So parents, teachers, help her, push her, challenge her to take vacations. That will be a gift to me if you take that vacation, Kathy. God, love, God bless you. You will be my prayer, and I'm grateful for all you have done for St. Francis and working with me together to do our best for our children. Take vacations. I'm not your boss, but that's why I challenge the parents. Please. Let us pray. Did I give you? I think you May the unfailing protection of the sacrifice we have received never leave, leave us alone. And may it always drive far from us all that will do us harm. To Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Tomorrow will be my last Mass, official Mass here at St. Francis at 1 p.m. following The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless you with peace to love and serve our Heavenly Father with our lives within one another. Let's go in peace. Thanks be to God.